So, as many of you are probably already aware, this is the DJI FPV drone. And if you remember my review of it, although I thought it was overall pretty great, it definitely had a few shortcomings. But since its release, a whole bunch of different companies have come out with various add-ons and accessories for it to help you get even more out of the drone and the FPV system. And some of them even attempt to fix some of those limitations that it was originally criticized for. So today, I thought I'd look over some of the accessories for the drone and the goggles that I've picked up over time uh, to give you guys a better look at what's out there and then give you guys my rating of how useful or game-changing they actually are. Of course, this is all my personal opinion and based off of my needs and preferences. Also, although I purchased most of these myself, some accessories were sent to me by their manufacturers. No one is paying me to promote any of these products though, and these are my genuine opinions. If that sounds good, let's get into it. All right, now, most of the accessories that I'll be talking about today are from third-party manufacturers, but I do want to start with a few from DJI themselves. The first one being the Fly More Kit. Now, the battery that you get with the drone already has a pretty good runtime, lasting me around 15 minutes when I'm just cruising around, which is about double what I would get with my regular batteries for my freestyle quads. But still, if you only have the one battery that came with it, it can be pretty limiting, especially if you're on the go and away from a charger. It can be pretty underwhelming to end your session after a single 15 minute flight. With the Fly More combo, you get two extra batteries, and a multi-charger so you can charge them all at once. These extra batteries should increase your flight time to somewhere around 45 minutes. To me, this is a no-brainer and is probably the first accessory that most people will buy for this FPV drone. It literally triples how much fun you can have with your quad. I'm starting off strong and I'm gonna give this a five for absolutely game-changing. Moving on to the other DJI accessory on my list, the motion controller. Now, I've mentioned in other videos why I personally love this thing, but it allows for a completely simplified way to control your FPV drone. The way I like to think of it is like real life Google Street View. You can spin and look around at all your surroundings, and then all you have to do is click in the direction that you wanna go, and the drone travels there. Now, on one hand, this controller greatly limits the maneuvers you can perform with your DJI drone and is more for basic exploration. It's probably not going to replace the controller that comes with it, but it's been an amazing way for me to allow friends and family to try FPV for themselves. I feel hesitant to say this because I don't want someone to take this literally crash and then blame me for it, but from my experience, I would honestly say that this pretty much allows someone to fly FPV with zero experience whatsoever. For the most part, it's simple. Pull the trigger to go, let go to stop. That's it. To this day, I think that this is personally my favorite accessory for this quad, but I'll also admit that it's not something that will be useful to everyone, and you can still have a great time without it. So on the game-changing scale, I'm gonna give this a three out of five. It's still nice to have. Next, if you're someone who keeps your DJI drone on fully auto camera settings, you'll notice that it maintains perfect exposure pretty flawlessly. However, if you want the best possible quality out of your camera, you're gonna have to learn how to change some of those settings manually. For example, if you're looking to get the best possible motion blur when you're filming in 60 frames per second, the general rule is that you're going to want to lock your shutter speed at 1 over 120. The only side effect of this is that it will limit your drone's camera for being able to auto expose your image properly. And in most scenarios, you'll end up with an image that is way too bright. The solution to this is using an ND filter, which are essentially sunglasses for your camera and will manually make your image darker. Now, the ones I use come from a company called PGY Tech. They come in a pack of three filters with different intensities so that you can pick and choose depending on the brightness of your location. Uh, and so far, they've worked really, really well. In my opinion, these are an absolute must if you're trying to get great quality video. And if you're flying a drone like this one, which is designed for cinematics, 
What else are you trying to do? So I'm gonna give these a five out of five. Actually, that's not fair. I'm sure there are some people out there that would rather not use these, uh, but I do wanna say that they do make a very big difference. So I'll say four on the game changing scale. Now the truth of the video quality of the DJI FPV drone is that many people were disappointed to find out that the quality and stabilization from a GoPro seemed better than what this camera had to offer. And in addition, GoPros offer you a wider range of customization options, including an option for a wider field of view, and also allow you to use Real Steady Go, which is an amazing software for stabilizing your footage. Well, this is why now there are a ton of different camera mounts available for the DJI drone. The one I have just easily snaps on top and is incredibly stable and allows you to mount a variety of different cameras, not just a GoPro on top. If you have a 3D printer, you could probably even find one of these to print off for free uh, or stick one of those uh, rounded GoPro mounts on top. Although I don't know if I would necessarily trust this. So I'm going to rate this a four. They're cheap, they're really useful, and you can have a lot of fun playing around with 360 cameras, backwards shots, and other configurations. I definitely prefer the image that comes out of a GoPro, so I use this pretty much every time I take my quad out. Uh, I think it's extremely useful to have. All right, now I'm gonna temporarily move on from the DJI drone itself to the DJI goggles. And this next one is for those of you who wanna get started in FPV, are considering getting some DJI gear, but also wanna practice flying micro drones around the house, which are typically analog. Well, this right here is an adapter which you can attach to the front of your goggles that allows you to insert an analog receiving module and essentially use these as analog goggles. This method will give you a tiny bit more latency than a regular pair of analog goggles, but in my opinion, it's completely usable and I hardly notice it at all. I inserted my rapid fire module because that's what I own and what I use in my analog goggles, but you should be able to use any standard module that you want. Unfortunately, you can't use the controller that comes with the DJI FPV drone with any other quads, so you will still need a secondary controller. That is something that you might want to keep in mind. Now, although this is a really cool product, again, it's not going to be relevant for everyone, and it does make your goggles pretty awkward with the extra antennas sticking off the front. Uh, some people are going to be really happy with it, but for me, I'm going to rate it a three for being nice to have. The next accessory is another basic one for the DJI goggles, but one big complaint that a lot of people had about these was the padding that comes along the inside. I think I already threw it out, so I can't show you what the original padding looks like, but it's pretty uncomfortable for most face shapes. It lets in a lot of light on the sides, and especially when you wear your goggles on your forehead like this, it's actually a little bit painful. And especially if I'm adjusting the drone or looking at my controller, I do this a lot. Now, it is possible to buy alternative foam padding from DJI or other companies as well. I've tried a few different ones out, and I think the DJI padding feels the most comfortable and more premium. Uh, I'd say that would be my first choice, but a close second is the padding made by iFlight. It tries to emulate the DJI padding, and they do a pretty good job. Both of them are around the $15 range, so get whatever is more convenient for you. If you're a frequent user of your DJI FPV goggles though, the padding is completely worth it and a borderline game changer, so I'm gonna give it a four. I honestly hate using these goggles without it. I just wish DJI included it with the FPV drone so that we wouldn't have to purchase it separately. In addition to that, I'll quickly talk about the goggle head strap that I use. The original head strap that comes with the DJI drone is pretty comfortable, but it looks and feels a bit awkward with the top strap that goes over your head, and overall is kind of boring. I had this cool strap sent to me by my friend Juan at Nord FPV, and I've honestly never looked back since. I also have a cheaper uh, strap that tries to emulate that on my other goggles, but um, it do just doesn't stretch as much. I'm not really a big fan. Uh, I love the design of this one, and the single thick strap across the back is way more comfortable, especially if you're resting your goggles on your forehead 
like I talked about before. I'll link his YouTube channel down below, so make sure to check him out if you're interested in getting one. Now, upgrading a strap isn't a necessary upgrade at all, but it is a fun way to stand out, and I would say that it is nice to have. So, I am still going to rate this a three. All right, going back to the drone again, and this next accessory is a cool one, and you might have already noticed it, but another big criticism that people had of this quad was its actual flight performance. Now, normally there are a few different ways to change the flight characteristics of a quad, but on the DJI drone, you're pretty limited. One thing that is possible now though, is changing the propellers that you use. One of the most interesting third-party accessories that I've purchased are these prop adapters that allow you to mount pretty much any standard propeller that you'd normally use under quads. Now, just as I purchased these, GemFan also reached out to me asking if I wanted to try out any of their propellers on the DJI FPV drone, and they ended up sending me a whole box of different ones to try, which was cool because my previous experimentation with propellers was pretty limited. Now, I even tried their LED propellers, which are really awesome and can add even more flair to your quad. Out of all the props I tried though, my personal favorite ones were the GemFan 5146 and the Nazgul 5140 props. I liked the GemFan props, which are the ones that I have right now, because they made the quad feel a little bit more snappy when I was flying more aggressively, making the DJI drone feel a little bit more like a traditional FPV quad. I would still get a little bit of prop wash during some aggressive maneuvers though, but still less than I would with the original props. I felt that the Nazgul props were the best at eliminating those prop wash vibrations, but also made the drone feel a little bit more floaty, which some people might like for cinematic shots. But the best part of these adapters is that you can play around with any propellers and find the ones that fit your specific needs. It's also a lot cheaper than buying DJI propellers. A set of these DJI props costs around $15, uh, while a set of regular props will cost you maybe $3 or less. Now, one thing that I disliked about the prop adapters is that they come with probably the worst prop nuts that I've ever used. Uh, and multiple times they've gotten stuck halfway down, making it really hard to tighten or remove the propellers. So if you have any extra prop nuts lying around, I definitely recommend using those instead. If I was to rate the prop adapters on quality, I'd probably give them a 2.5, but in terms of the benefit that they provide, I still gotta give them a four. This next accessory will be especially useful to anybody who wears glasses. This company called VR Wave sent me their high quality prescription lenses for the DJI FPV goggles that can be customized to your specific vision needs. Even if you already have great vision, their basic lenses can help reduce glare and can also filter out blue light, which can cause eye strain over long periods of time. If you've ever stared at a monitor for hours and then later felt discomfort in your eyes, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. They even come with this cool light and a card to give you a nice visualization of how they work. Overall, I'm very impressed. The quality of these seems really, really good and they seem to use high quality materials. They're also very easy to attach and clip on over top your existing lenses. Now, it's important to note that one thing these lenses won't do is stop your goggle screen from getting burnt by the sun if you leave them lying around in direct sunlight. So it's something you still have to look out for if you leave your goggles outside. Anyways, I would say that if you are someone who wears glasses, these are definitely a game changer. Uh, I personally do not, and I'm still unsure how I feel about needing the blue light protection. Uh, honestly, I don't think I'd care enough to buy them myself. So if you are someone who can use the prescription lenses or tends to suffer from eye strain, I would easily rate these a five. I'd get them in a heartbeat if I was you. But if you don't, maybe a two, uh, you probably don't need them. All right, next, if you are someone who wants to fly other digital drones using your DJI goggles, there are a bunch of different antenna upgrades made to give you better penetration and better range. The ones I use are the Crystal HD patch antennas by iFlight, which combine two Omni antennas at the top, which will give you better range in a circular pattern around you, and a built-in patch antenna that will give you extra long range in a more linear pattern directly in the direction that your goggles are facing. 
Now, there are other options out there. These are just the ones that I'm using, but these work really well for me. Now, it's important to note that this antenna upgrade will be more beneficial to your other quads and not the DJI FPV drone itself. I've tested it and was still able to get some really solid range, but if you wanna get something that's specifically for your DJI FPV drone, you'll wanna get a dual band antenna upgrade, which I personally haven't tried. One of the reasons for this is because I honestly think the stock antennas that come with the DJI goggles are really good. If anything, my favorite part about these ones are that they make my goggles a little bit more lower profile and you don't have those awkward DJI antennas sticking off. I don't really wanna unscrew them every time, but if you don't, you could end up breaking them if you knock them into something. So I'm gonna rate these a three because they're definitely nice to have, but again, they won't help everybody especially if you're someone who primarily uses the DJI drone and not another digital quad with the DJI system. Now, the last annoying thing that I've encountered with my DJI FPV drone is packing and organizing all of its accessories, mostly because of how bulky this drone is and how much proprietary gear it uses. I did some research online and ended up picking up this case from VCU Tech. I reached out to the company and they did end up sending me one, and I gotta say that it's extremely well built and has a very thoughtful design. Even with all my new accessories, the case still fits pretty much everything in a convenient and organized way. It has hidden storage compartments for storing propellers and antennas, and even has slots for spare SD cards. It really seems like they thought about everything. The only downside is, is that I still have to remove my propellers when I'm storing it in there. And if I'm using a third party prop that doesn't simply clip on, uh, I don't normally want to take them off. It's kind of a hassle. Besides that though, even when it's closed, the case has a very professional look. It feels very durable and high quality, and it's completely waterproof. If you're using this drone professionally or just use it very often, I'd highly recommend picking up a case like this one. So I'm gonna give it a four for definitely worth it. Finally, I'll quickly mention one more bonus accessory, which is completely free and can be downloaded from the internet. And that is the DigiView app for Android phones and for your browser. Now, if you're using the DJI FPV drone, you can plug a phone or tablet into your goggles using the DJI Fly app and display the video feed from your goggles onto that device so that someone else can watch along with you. Now, this option is normally unavailable if you plan on flying another quad that isn't the DJI FPV drone. The DigiView app allows you to work around that though and will give you video out to your phone or your computer, whether you're flying a Nazgul or any other quad with a DJI Air unit or Vista. Now, I'll mention that I personally had better luck getting this to work on my V1 goggles than I did on my V2 goggles which are the ones that come with the drone. Whether it works also might be a hit or miss depending on what phone you're using. For some of you though, this could be really helpful, so I still wanted to mention it. I'm gonna rate it a three as well. But anyways, that's it. Those are some of my favorite accessories that I've used in the past few months. I'll have links to everything down in the description below if you wanna check them out. And if there are some accessories that you guys have tried that I didn't mention, let me know in the comments below. As always, I appreciate every single one of you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.